A few days ago, Microsoft held their Surface event with plenty of interesting announcements. AMD finally has an APU in premium laptops in the form of the 3780U, which should compete with Intel's 10 nanometer chips in the 15-inch Surface Laptop 3. Intel's 3D stacked Lakefield also made an appearance in the Surface Neo and Surface Duo, which is probably why both will only come to market at the end of 2020. But the product that caught most people's attention was the Surface Pro X, which features a custom ARM-based chip designed by Microsoft in conjunction with Qualcomm. Microsoft is clearly intent on going after Apple's laptop and tablet lines. How will Apple respond to the Surface announcements? And what does this mean for the future of the PC? As it turns out, the SQ1 is not the only ARM chip coming to PCs in the coming months. Microsoft has stated that the SQ1 is a custom design based on Qualcomm's 8CX. I spoke about the 8CX almost a year ago in a video I made about ARM on the desktop. It's taken a long time for the chip to materialize, and even the already announced Samsung Book S is nowhere to be found. The 8CX has the potential to be truly disruptive. It's competitive with Intel's mobile 9th gen i5 chips in terms of performance per watt, and Microsoft Microsoft claims the SQ1 is three times faster per watt than Intel's 8th gen chips. You will not find this anywhere else. Together with Qualcomm, we also redesigned the GPU and other pieces of silicon IP, which I want to say but I'm not allowed to. When Microsoft states that they can't reveal too much about the work they made with Qualcomm on the SQ1, to me that sounds like marketing smoke and mirrors for the fact that the SQ1 is basically a overclocked 8CX, along with Qualcomm's updated Adreno 680 GPU, the 685. It makes sense for Microsoft to ask Qualcomm for a more powerful GPU, seeing as both Intel and AMD offer powerful integrated GPUs. Apple makes custom silicon in the form of the A-series chips, so Microsoft wants you to believe that they are doing the same thing for their tablet products. To be honest, I have serious doubts that Microsoft really added anything to the SQ1 chip, at least as far as silicon is concerned. I suspect most of the customizations are happening on the software side. The HCX already has dedicated AI blocks, so at best Microsoft has custom software to build upon Qualcomm's AI IP. Despite what Microsoft said in the live presentation, Qualcomm has confirmed that the SQ1 uses the same fourth generation AI engine found on the Snapdragon 850. Regardless of how much silicon customization Microsoft really did, the 8CX and the souped-up SQ1 are clear indicators of what we should expect from ARM on the PC. By the way, regarding the Surface laptops, which have AMD and Intel SoCs, I think there's a slim chance the 13-inch version will sell decently, but there's a very low chance that the 15-inch models will sell all that well. They are nice-looking laptops, sure, but people all only spend this kind of money on Apple laptops because they have the Apple logo on the back. <laughs> That's it. Microsoft doesn't have the brand recognition to be using the Apple model of underspec laptops for high prices. Only Apple can pull that off. So I feel like Microsoft should really only be focusing on the Surface Pro X and forget about the laptops, but maybe I'll be proven wrong. So the SQ1 and 8CX are certainly impressive for how small and power efficient they are, but the does ARM have something else coming that's even more powerful than the 8CX? Before I talk about some of the exclusive information I have on Apple's upcoming ARM-based products, there are a couple of things I'd like to discuss. The first is to do with RISC-V. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video where I talked about how RISC-V is poised to become the standard ISA in pretty much every computing segment. There were a lot of comments about how I said last year that ARM would be taking over the PC, but now I'm saying RISC-V will probably take that 
role instead. Those are fair comments, but you have to understand that things change very quickly in the tech industry. While a year ago, RISC-V didn't have much traction from the industry, in the last 8 to 12 months, a great number of high-profile companies have joined the RISC-V Foundation. And I can tell you that ARM are scared of RISC-V. One segment that is probably a lost cause already is microcontrollers. It will take at least a couple of years before ARM can put out a class of chips that can challenge RISC-V in this area. And by then, the damage done will probably be too great for ARM to recover from. But of course, ARM are not sitting still, and we'll get to that in a second. The second thing I'd like to quickly address is the reason why ARM appeared so vital to me last year for the future of the PC. <laughs> Guess what? They still do. Both ARM and RISC-V address the same core issues that were the basis for my analysis back then. It's what they offer compared to x86 that really matters to Microsoft and Apple. Which platform gets it done, ARM or RISC-V, is really not that important. What matters is the bridge that Microsoft and Apple want to create between mobile phones and PCs. If you can't see how this is progressing, then you are not looking close enough. When you look at the upcoming Samsung Book S, you can see why this bridge between phone and PC is absolutely crucial to the future of PCs. The Samsung Book S also uses Qualcomm's HCX, which is basically the same as Microsoft's SQ1, as we established earlier. With this ARM-based chip, you can have your phone connected to the Book S and have it completely integrated into a fully working version of Windows 10. Or you can just pop in your SIM card into the laptop itself. This means you can run your phone apps like Instagram on the desktop and have full keyboard support and for instance take a picture with your phone and have it instantly available on your computer. It's a fully integrated and fluid experience. There are no emulators, no lag, and if you have both a phone and the Book S, it all works wirelessly. What Apple and Microsoft want to do is make the phone and the PC a seamless integrated experience. And you simply can't do that with x86 without going through emulation hoops. It will never feel like a seamless user experience unless both phones and computers are running the same platform. <laughs> the irony is that most people are stuck on this idea that it will be hard for ARM-based PCs to take over the market because they have to emulate x86 and not all apps are supported. These people are looking at this in the completely wrong perspective. As far as Microsoft and Apple are concerned, it's precisely the other way around. The fact that x86 would have to emulate ARM in order to give users a seamless phone and PC integrated experience is the very reason they want to use ARM as the base hardware. Both Microsoft and Apple prefer to have less native desktop app support in the short term and instead full ARM mobile support rather than the other way around because they understand that the future of the PC is deeply connected with the mobile experience. This is why I said last year that ARM has an open highway to take over the PC market. RISC-V throws a monkey wrench into that plan because it's an open spec platform that doesn't require licensing and can be customized by silicon companies. So it's ARM, but better, although certainly not perfect. Now the question you might have asked yourself is, why on earth does ARM even care about challenging x86 on the PC? Shouldn't they just focus on not losing the mobile market to RISC-V? The thing about ARM that you need to understand is that they were bought by SoftBank not just for funsies, but for a future massively profitable exit. The recent blunder with WeWork gives us a clear insight into the Japanese fund's strategy as far as investments go. SoftBank acquired ARM for $31 billion in 2016, with the plan to sell ARM for several times that within 10 years. For that to happen, ARM will need to raise its valuation dramatically. How? By entering new markets. This is why the PC segment is so important for ARM. This is why they are investing in AI IPs, GPUs, 5G, and has 
as you're about to see, high-end cores. Apple represents around 20% of ARM's business. In fact, Apple was involved in ARM's creation back in the 90s in conjunction with Acorn and VLSI. And just like Microsoft, Apple wants to transition all of their devices to ARM as the line between PC and phone blurs in the coming years. If you saw my video Who Really Runs Tech Companies and if you've been following Intel's CEO recent public comments, you know that customers are the ones who dictate what these large companies invest resources in. The same is true for ARM. With Apple being their largest customer, Apple pretty much dictates a lot of what ARM researches and develops. And it's no coincidence that Apple releases ARM's latest IP in their products months before any of their competitors. This also explains why Microsoft went to Qualcomm for the SQ1 rather than working directly with ARM. This close relationship between ARM and Apple will always represent a disadvantage for Microsoft. So Apple and Microsoft want to move to ARM for this PC plus phone bridge, and ARM's parent company wants them to expand their business and increase their valuation so that they can have a successful exit. It's a perfect storm of giant corporations all benefiting greatly from this transition. Now with that out of the way, I did mention I have some exclusive information regarding Apple moving to ARM, didn't I? So here's some exclusive information I received from a couple of sources connected to Apple. ARM is working on a high-end core for Apple. So this isn't just a power-efficient mobile core, it's a high-performance part. Physically, this will be slightly bigger than the 8CX cores. So we're talking about a tiny core size compared to what Intel and AMD currently offer, for instance. In addition to that, much like Apple has been doing in the last iterations of their A-series chips, there will be a non-chip AI accelerator, but this time much larger than any of the ones Apple have had in the past, and larger than Qualcomm's 4th gen AI engine. This indicates to me that Apple plans to further expand their AI capabilities in facial recognition, video and image filters, but especially in speech recognition. Microsoft has been making great progress in in this regard, and Apple also plans to invest heavily into text-to-speech integration in their future products. And that's not all. Regarding core count, the high-end chip that Apple is expected to put together with this new big core is an 8-core SoC with no SMT, so that's 8 cores and 8 threads. As far as performance is concerned, ARM's roadmap projects a 30% IPC gain every generation, so here here we would be comparing this upcoming core to the A77. With that in mind, we're looking at a performance level pretty close to that of a high-end Ryzen or Intel chip, but of course at a much lower power consumption. The 8CX is already faster than 8th gen Core i5s. The A13 in the iPad Pro is faster per watt than Intel's chips on their current MacBooks. So considering the IPC gain over the A77, I'd expect this 8-core SoC to match AMD's Ryzen 7s and Intel's latest Core i7s, but with much better efficiency. The first product to feature this new chip will be the next-generation MacBook Air, with the MacBook Pros and even the all-in-one iMacs currently being under consideration for a move to ARM as well. Now when will this transition happen? It's expected in 2020 when Apple announces their next generation MacBooks. My guess would be WWDC in June next year, so that's a mere 8 months from now. This is a move to ARM with no compromises as far as performance is concerned with much more efficient chips and with the ability to bridge the PC and phone experiences. Along with the Surface Pro X, this is the beginning of a new age for the PC.
There's also work being done at ARM on a custom discrete GPU. Like I mentioned in past videos, ARM have recently created a team internally to improve compatibility with Unreal Engine and Unity in an effort to improve their graphics IP. And recent job postings seem to confirm that this is a large team effort. Considering Apple's recent push into gaming, I suspect Apple has asked ARM to deliver a GPU capable of running triple AAA games, so that's PC AAA titles, as well as professional graphics applications to use in their products in the coming years. Regardless of it being integrated into the SoC or as a discrete GPU, it looks like it's not just Intel who will be ditched by Apple starting next year, but also AMD. With both Apple and Microsoft making this push for ARM-based PCs, and with Intel being capable of mass-producing Lakefield before the end of next year, I would be seriously considering my options if I were in Intel and AMD's shoes. What do you do when the two major operating systems move to ARM? Intel and AMD better have some truly disruptive products in the coming years if they are to remain relevant. Perhaps now you understand why I've shown concern with Intel's obsession with addressing their current server customer needs, rather than thinking ahead at truly disruptive technology. So I know this is a lot of information to digest, but the main takeaway here is that the long-rumored Apple move away from Intel to ARM is indeed happening, and the first iteration of this chip is going to rival the high-end x86 ones in performance, but with much better efficiency, and it's coming next year. I didn't touch on 5G and why that's a massively important technology, and another reason why ARM makes perfect sense for Microsoft and Apple but perhaps I'll cover 5G in a future video. Now, because I know some of you guys will comment saying you don't want this to be the future of the PC, I'm going to make it clear, again, that this is not necessarily what I want for my PC either. In fact, I think Microsoft in particular has a huge mountain to climb when it comes to usability in figuring out how to make the Surface Pro X play nice with the Windows way of handling applications. I don't see myself being as productive using something like the Surface Pro X as I am with my Windows Workstation PC. But that's me. We enthusiasts and power users are a tiny portion of the market. It doesn't really matter what you and I want. Microsoft and Apple, and Google for that matter, will direct their efforts to what the majority of PC users want. So you have to look at things from that perspective. The vast majority of people use PCs for Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and browsing the web. This is what the lion's share of the market does, so it's only natural that PCs will evolve into what the market wants. This is why laptops sold so well up until recently, and why tablets, which are now becoming as capable as laptops, are taking their place. All the while, traditional PC sales are declining every year. More and more, the enthusiast PC market will become like the audiophile niche, and this is an analogy I've used before, it's likely that gaming PCs as we know them will still be around for years to come. Yes, but as the normie user base transitions into these PC slash phone hybrids, components for gaming PCs will get progressively more expensive, just like for audio files, high-end gear is incredibly expensive because of the limited market size. For better or worse, this is where I see things headed. Regardless of what you or I want, Microsoft has an ARM-based Surface today, and Apple is bringing ARM to their laptops next year. The PC is getting closer to the phone than it's ever been. Now, if only Samsung could send me the Book S for review. If you haven't joined my Patreon yet, please consider supporting my work and help this channel continue to exist. Become a patron and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can discuss technology news and trends with myself and a really healthy and welcoming community of like-minded enthusiasts. So join my Patreon today. Thanks for watching and until the next one.